during the D-Day invasion. Now, in that airplane, we have 10 Marines in combat fatigues with round parachutes, the old style parachutes. To my, to your left, my right, the Condor Squadron is taxiing out. The Condor Squadron is composed, they're based out of Van Nuys. They were originally a Civil Air Patrol Squadron doing search and rescue. Okay. It's by Corral Jr. and Colton Sorensen. It's going to be a while to set it up because the airplanes have to take off, they have to get in formation, some will have to do a holding pattern, and then they'll come over the field. So this, if you have your camera with you, and I certainly hope you do, this is going to be a well worthwhile thing to photograph. The airplane taxiing out, C-53, is a variant of the C-47, and what happens, why these numbers change back and forth, is because C means cargo, and that's a contract, and the number is a contract number. So if you have a C-47, it's the 47th cargo contract that was signed by the Army. If you keep on improving the airplane, so much to the point where it's a whole brand new contract deal, then you have to do the new contract number. Basically, a C-47, a C-53, a C-35, there's not that much difference in them. One may have a reinforced floor, one may have more windows, but it's still the basic airplane. Now, the basic route of this airplane is the Douglas DC-3. That's the airplane that made it right now that this area in front of us was France in 1943 and 44. The airspace and the country was completely dominated and occupied by the Germans. If you mind. For many years, they actually owned that whole airspace. They owned that basically all of Europe. And they were on the eastern front as well. They couldn't get across the They were across the English Channel bombing. They didn't, because of the Spitfire, they didn't own that. But they owned, they owned this land. When you travel in France, you actually see the evidence of that to this day. You see it in buildings that have never been restored intentionally and so forth. But while that was being done, there, were, there was a plan. And their plan was called Operation Overlord. And it was that time. Coastal France came the Americans and came the British. And they began to engage. And then came Operation Overlord, which led up to D Day. What you're going to see here is a simulation of the airborne jumps that they did for D Day. Keep in mind, they did this jump at night in fully occupied territory. In other words, there was no way. They weren't in some area that was not occupied. And the Germans knew that they were coming. The airplane's coming over at approximately 1,500 foot. It should take, once they exit the airplane and pop the parachutes, approximately five minutes for the entire operation to take place. Now imagine the sky full of C-47s. Hundreds. Hundreds, thousands maybe. Jumping in the dark. Guys, combat ready. Now, fine. Of course, the Germans don't want them to do this. Thank you. 
on our planes. Also, the thing to know too, these kids jumping were kids. They were 18 to 20 years old, usually tops. They were they were our, our finest youth. This, these Marines will probably tell you, is an easy jump because it's done in daylight. When the guys did this from the 82nd and the 101st, it was in the middle of the night. Yep. The formations got scattered. Groups landed where they shouldn't. A lot of paratroopers, this was the last thing they did because they landed in water and swamps, got hung up in trees. You've all seen the picture of the, of the fellow hanging from the church steeple at St. Merrick Lease. Also, low-level jumping is uh, is very uh, tight business. You uh, you have to know what you're doing. So to go ahead and do this at night is pretty amazing to think about. You know, just the uh, the strength of American and Allied youth. This youth that we still have here will go out and do it again today. But they'll go to a real place where it needs to be done. But that part of the thing, too, is we fly with borders, as I said, we have aerobatic boxes, show lines and boxes, so you can't you can't hedge overly much because you don't want to encroach on the area of the audience. So that's what we're dealing with as we come in here. But you wait till you see, like you do this jump, what it looks like when 10 people come out of an aircraft like this in that quick order. Now when they were carrying paratroopers to a video, more than 10, plus 20, some, 20 something people in the airplane. And they jumped in what they call a stick. The line of guys going out there the was referred to as a stick. So, as much as we love the sea breeze up in Camarillo, if this wind is too strong, we don't know what's going to happen. Jumpers up, on him. Ten paratroopers looking at two lights, a red light and a green light. The red light comes on, they stand up and they hook up. The green light comes on, it's go, 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 go. Thousands of jumpers jump like this in Normandy, thousands. What you saw the four airplanes with one pulling out of formation. The aviation salute to its fallen heroes. That's called a missing man in formation. The formation flies by, and one airplane pulls up, about 